As I'm sure you've noticed, your level of consciousness varies through daily waves of sleep and wakefulness. This rhythm is so predictable that we humans plan all of our activities to fit into this cycle. Although people differ in their sleep habits, as some people are early risers and others are night owls, everyone's sleep and activity patterns fit into this general cycle of day and night. This day and night cycle is referred to as circadian rhythm. In Latin, circa means about and dn means day. Circadian rhythm can be generally described as the 24 hour variations in physiological processes. Beyond the most apparent sleep and wake cycle of the circadian rhythm, many biological and psychological processes follow this daily or circadian rhythm. For example, daily human body temperatures decrease during sleep and rise during wake. This cycle resets every day. Many hormones also follow daily patterns of rise and fall. For example, the daily rhythm of melatonin, a hormone that promotes sleep, is opposite to that of daily temperature. It rises just around the time we go to sleep and drops to very low levels during the day. Not surprisingly, self-reports of alertness also vary throughout the day, with highest levels of alertness during the daytime and lowest levels in the middle of the night. Although these rhythms appear to follow the external light-dark cycle, they are not slaves to the schedule of the sun. In fact, these rhythms are actually generated internally by a small collection of neurons in the brain. When people live under conditions without the regular appearance of dawn and dusk, their temperature, hormone, activity, and sleep rhythms follow a pattern that is close to, but not exactly 24 hours. These are called free running rhythms and are endogenous, meaning that they're internally generated by specialized areas of the brain. Free running rhythms have been extensively studied in hamsters living in constant dim light. Hamsters love to run on their wheels when they first wake up. However, by the end of the day, they run on the wheel much less in the absence of any external day cues. However, how can we test free running rhythms in humans? Most people wouldn't want to live in an environment without time cues, but several people did volunteer to live for a period of months in underground bunkers as part of a research study. They woke up a little later every day and eventually their rhythms were disconnected from the day and night cycle. Results from this and similar studies reveal an endogenous rhythm close to 25 hours in humans. Free running rhythms have also been documented in natural conditions of constant light and dark, such as the Arctic and in certain types of blindness, where again, natural rhythms are slightly longer than the 24 hour day. The reason that most of us don't completely free run, but synchronize to the 24 hour day is because our rhythms are reset each day by light, ensuring that our internally generated rhythms are synchronized to our environment. Shortening or lengthening of our days by traveling across time zones or shift work throws off the synchronization and it takes time for the body to readjust to the new daily cycle. Let's now consider ultraradian biological rhythms, which repeat on a cycle less than 24 hours. One example of an ultraradian rhythm is the sleep cycle, when the brain and body undergo a pattern of changes about every 90 minutes. If we take a closer look at an average night's sleep, we can see that the approximately 90 minute sleep cycle repeats throughout the night. Some of this activity can be observed by simply watching someone sleep. Rapid eye movement or REM is where the eyes move around underneath the eyelids and burst throughout a night's sleep. The amount of REM changes throughout the night, but the frequency is fairly consistent, kicking in about every 90 minutes. Other changes that occur during sleep, like dreams, are not so easily observed by watching from the outside. But 
we've all experienced weird and wonderful adventures inside our own heads when we sleep. Studies show that people are more likely to report dreams if they are woken during an episode of REM, more so than non-REM. So, rapid eye movement sleep has a special relationship with dreaming. Non-REM sleep is divided into four separate stages based upon the depth of sleep. Sleep depth can be measured by determining how hard it is to wake someone up. Researchers do this by using the acoustic arousal threshold, which is a fancy term for the amount of sound required for awakening. Stage four is the deepest level of sleep because it has the highest acoustic arousal threshold. REM usually follows stage four sleep, but in many ways it's more similar to waking. This is most obvious by comparing patterns of brain activity during the different stages. For many years, it was assumed that the brain was fairly inactive during sleep. Since a major feature of sleep is a dramatic reduction in movement, early psychologists had few tools to study sleep. Although, with the advent of EEG technology, scientists have now learned that the brain undergoes predictable changes with shifts in wakefulness and awareness. These example EEG traces show brain activity for someone who is awake and then falling into the stages of sleep as defined by distinct brain wave activities. As someone first begins to fall asleep, they transition through a state of relaxed drowsiness, shown by these distinct alpha waves. A person then passes into a light sleep as shown by the transition of alpha waves into theta waves. In addition to shifting from alpha to theta waves, passing into a sleep state is also defined by the appearance of sleep spindles, which are bursts of neural oscillatory activity readily detected by EEG recordings. After spending some time in light sleep, a person will fall further into deep sleep, characterized by large and slow delta waves. Because of this, stages three and four are often called slow wave sleep. Slow wave sleep is the deepest level of sleep, since it's here where we're least responsive to the outside world. Finally, following deep sleep, a person often passes into REM sleep, which EEG activity much more resembles awake recordings than other sleep recordings. Interestingly, if we look over the average lifespan, sleep patterns can change dramatically. Infants and young children, shown on the left, sleep more than adults, shown on the right. Not only is their amount of sleep greater, but they also spend significantly more time in REM sleep. During adolescence and adulthood, the amount of sleep that involves REM steadily decreases. The high degree of REM during the beginning of life has led some researchers to suggest that REM sleep might be important for supporting brain growth and development. While seemingly simple, Hopefully now you can appreciate the complicated nature of this strange activity we engage in every night called sleep.